Wait a second, go back one. <laughs> hey Rick, what are you doing here? Well, Weaselton, I popped by the studio to say hello and there was a lineup, so I just got in. <laughs> well, uh, since you're here, would you mind taking Gary's spot in the show? He's running a little late. I would love to host the show. You would? When do I do that? Oh, in about 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds? No, I've got to do my hair. Okay, I've got to get my Rick, you're on in about 20 seconds. 20 Over seconds? Over to the desk. Over there? Over there. Okay. Um, okay, Rick, right over there is the teleprompter, okay. and over here we have your selfie stick, okay. and, um, okay, you're on in five, five, four, three, two. Hi, I'm Rick Mercer, this is NL Now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick Mercer. Welcome back to Newfoundland Now. I'm filling in because Gary, Gary's running a little late, but eventually Gary will show up and I guess maybe we'll do the show together. I'm not sure, but I do know that now I get to introduce our first musical act. He's a country music legend. He's won two Juno Awards. He's a proud Newfoundlander. Please welcome to the show, Eddie Eastman. The ship of life is in the harbor, setting out to sea. Would you take my hand and sail away with me? This big old world keeps turning round and around. The sea of life's got you up, got you down. One thing I want. The sun always shines, 
sail away with me. Sail away with me. Hello, folks, and welcome to NL Now. I am so sorry for not being here to open the show, but I got stuck in a little traffic on K-Mount Road, but I hear our first guest stepped in here and introduced our musical act, Eddie Eastman. I, um, I just got here in time to hear a little of Eddie's song to open up the show, and it sounded great. We will catch up with him later in the show for a chat and hear him perform another song. Sitting with me now in the interview chair could be the next host of NL Now. Who knows? He's a man who you've all seen on his TV show, The Rick Mercer Report. Please welcome Rick Mercer. Hello, Rick. Thanks for stopping by and filling in for me there at the thank, top of the show. Thank you for having me. I, 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 I was thrilled to fill in for you. That was great fun. So how have you been? I've been great. So um, can you give us a little bio on yourself, like where you were born, grew up, and went to school? Okay. I was born in Middle Cove, which is just outside of St. John's. Well, I guess I was born in St. John's, but I grew up in Middle Cove. Uh, you might have gone to Middle Cove Beach before, have mm -hmm. you? Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I went to school in St. John's. I went to McDonald Drive Elementary, McDonald Drive Junior High, and Prince of Wales Collegiate. Now, um, um, how was high school? Because when Alan Hocko was here, he said he had quite a few visits to the office for not being good. Did you have any oh. visits to the office? Well, I certainly knew my principal yeah. pretty well. His name was Clyde Flight. I only called him Mr. Flight back then, of course. Um, I, I, I enjoyed high school. I was involved in the student council, and it was in high school where I got uh, involved in the theater club. And the theater club changed my life really. It was by joining the theater club I figured out that I wanted to be an actor and I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to do comedy and that's all I've done ever since. When you, you lived in St. John's and you were growing up, did you always have the same group of friends that you would hang out with and write plays and perform with and rent a theater to perform in? That's a good question. I never thought about it but yeah, the, the people that I was in my first comedy troupe with that I all met in high school. Um, some of them are still in the business. Andrew Young Husband is one of them and he hosts Canada's Worst Driver and Canada's mm -hmm. Worst Handyman and those shows. And Ashley Billard uh, is a good friend of mine and he's involved in Shakespeare by the Sea here in Newfoundland. And Christine Taylor was uh, uh, in that group and she's in Nova Scotia now but still in the business. So yeah, yeah. and and. The friends from high school are still my friends today. Now, um, us here at NL now, my son Weaselton, you yes, know Weaselton. Yes, I met Weaselton yes, earlier, um, yeah. He seemed so, like a nice fella. <laughs> so um, he once did a segment from the LSPU Hall here in St. John's. What would you say is your best memory from the LSPU Hall? Um, I started out doing comedy shows, and we would do it in the basement of the LSPU Hall, in the gallery, not even upstairs in the theater, so we could... <laughs> put about 60 or 70 people in there and we would do cabarets at midnight and I was in a comedy group and uh, and people started coming out watching the show and we got to hold it over and do it again and again and we built an audience and that was perhaps the most exciting thing that ever happened and then years later I started doing one-man shows and I was upstairs on the big stage and we ran for 12 or 13 nights, which was a very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really, really exciting because I knew that I could um, maybe make a go of it, being a comedian and an actor. So it was pretty exciting stuff. So um, now let's talk about your popular TV show, The Rick yep. Mercer Report. It is very popular. Yes. <laughs> How and when did The Rick Mercer Report get started? Well, uh, some people might remember that I started out on a TV show called This Hour Has 22 Minutes, mm -hmm. uh, which Mark Critch is now the, the, yes. the star of. Um, I was one of the people who created the show, and I did that show for eight years, and I really enjoyed it. And then I decided I wanted to do my own show, and so we went to Toronto and started The Rick Mercer Report, because I wanted to travel more. This Hour Has 22 Minutes is a great show, but... The traveling basically means going to Ottawa, whereas I wanted to go to the north, 
to Nunavut, to Labrador, to British Columbia. I wanted to go all over Canada, so I needed a show that would let me do that, and that's why I created the Rick Mercer Report. So um, can you take us through a recording of your show and how it all works? Well, we tape every Friday night in the CBC Broadcast Center, and you can see that off the top of the show. I'm standing on the roof holding a sign. That's a big building in downtown Toronto. A live audience comes, and we tape the show. And what that means is I sit at a desk, a lot like your desk, and I talk to the audience, and then I play back for the audience the segments that I've shot on the road. So I'll also say earlier this week I went to Yellowknife, or earlier this week I went to Newfoundland, and we play those pieces back, and we record the audience laughing, or not laughing, and then we put, put it all together and put it on TV. So, um, how... so that's the live part of my show. Yes. I think the big... The, the reason why the show is famous is not because of that part, it's because of the traveling part and because mm -hmm. we go to so many different places. So, um, of course, everyone is familiar with the famous Rick Mercer rant segment on mm -hmm. your show. Where do your ideas and thoughts come from when you're doing one of those rants? The rants come from a lot of different places, but I think a lot of Newfoundlanders are ranters. There's a lot of people in Newfoundland that rant, as you well know, but a lot of them just rant at their family or they rant at their television or their radio, and I'm really lucky that I get to rant on television. And sometimes I rant about things that make me angry. Sometimes I rant about things that I find absurd or funny. Sometimes I rant about things that I think are really stupid. And sometimes I rant about things that I think are really important and I hope that more people pay attention to that subject. Usually I try to be funny, but sometimes they're serious. Now, um, the show is done in Toronto, yep. so how often do you try and come back home for a visit? Well, my mom and dad are in Middle Cove, and uh, I like to spend as much time with them as I can. So I definitely get home in the summer for either 10 days to two weeks, and I get home every Christmas and I try to get home as much as I can in between. Mm -hmm. So I get home a fair bit for someone who has a job in Toronto. <laughs> so um, is there a Rick Mercer blooper reel? Yes, but I will never show it to anyone. <laughs> There's a lot of bloopers. As you know, yes. being in television, mm -hmm. a lot of things can go wrong. And uh, well, like for example, when I'm doing the rants, I'm walking forward really fast doing this, but my mm -hmm. cameraman is walking backwards, and sometimes he falls over things or slips on the ice or hooks his arm on something, and so there's a whole lot of footage of him falling over. And, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time dangling off things, dangling out of helicopters, off bridges, you know, out of trees, and sometimes when you dangle, things go, things go wrong. And so there's a lot of those bloopers. I fall down a lot on my show, so there's a lot of those bloopers. Although, you know, we often put that stuff on television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people like to see me mess things up, but I never try to. Well, um, we have had quite a few guests mess up here. I should probably really? show. Yes. Oh. Yes, like Do you have a blooper reel? Well, we don't have a reel, but we certainly have bloopers. Okay. <laughs> So um, you've traveled and reported and hosted many events across our country. Mm -hmm. Can you think of a time something strange and funny happened during one of your events you've hosted? Well, I was hosting the Gemini Awards on television, live one time, and I fell down the stairs. <laughs> there were just four stairs, and I got down two of them, fine, and then I just slipped and fell over. And uh, my niece said, oh my God, you must have been so embarrassed. But it never crossed my mind to be embarrassed. And then I thought, oh yeah, I guess falling over on live television. <laughs> um, I've been on live television and there's a teleprompter telling me what to say and it's gone blank. That's, uh -huh. really, that's a really scary feeling. And just recently, I hosted Canada Day on Parliament Hill for Canada 150. Mm -hmm. And I was on the roof of the West Block. And it was a very complicated show because Canada has a lot of time zones and I had to do it we had to prepare for everything and then there, it was raining and there was all this security and then lightning started coming into the area yeah. and they started saying we're going to have to move to the basement and it, there was just so many different things going on and then finally at the last minute they said you're live to the nation and I had to go live 
And every now and then someone would run up to me and say, you're going to be back on TV in three minutes, but we don't know what you're doing. We don't know whether you're throwing to Newfoundland or Saskatchewan. Just, so just stand there. And it was scary, but it was really, really exciting. <laughs> Now, um, we have a lot of families and young kids who enjoy watching our show. That's good. Is there a piece of advice you can give to someone who has a dream or goal they are trying to reach? Um, I think if you practice doing whatever it is that you want to do, obviously if you want to be a musician, you have to practice being a musician as much as you can. If you wanted to do something like I do, work in television, or you work in television, you have to you have to create television and you can do that now because you can do it with your iPhone and you can put it on YouTube and, and the more that you practice, the better you'll get. And so if you want to be a writer, then you have to write stuff. And okay. if there's a school newspaper, you write for them. And if there is no school newspaper, you write for yourself. And it goes for whatever you want to do. And also, um, stay in school, that's really important, but uh, just try your very best and don't give up on your dreams. It's really important but stay in school. Okay, Rick, now we are going to play a little game. I like oh, there's call. a game? Yes, it's called Get to Know Me. Okay. I'll ask you five questions, and you'll okay. come back with the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Favorite food? Pizza. Favorite color? Red. Favorite place to visit in our province? Hmm. That's Middle Cove. Favorite song to sing out loud to when you're alone in the car? Life is a Highway by Tom Cochran. And name one person you would like to sit down with and do a one-on-one -on -one interview with. Neil Young. Okay, Rick, now it's time for the famous NL Now selfie. Okay. So grab the selfie stick okay, down gotcha. there. Okay, gotcha. Yes, and hold it up and smile. And perfect, perfect. Well, um, Thanks again, Rick, for coming in today to chat with us. Thanks very much. Thanks for inviting me. I and if you're ever running late for your show and need a host, uh, send me a message and I'll be uh, on the next plane to Toronto. Okay, that's yes. a deal. <laughs> or um, if you need a field reporter here in Newfoundland. Okay. Up, <laughs> okay, up after the break to end off the show, we will hear once again from Eddie Eastman. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, folks. Joining us once again is Mr. Eddie Eastman. Hello, Eddie. Well, hello. Hello, thanks for coming in to take the time to perform and chat with us. Hey, it's my pleasure. My pleasure indeed. I hope you're enjoying it. Yes. So a little while back, you did a mini tour of our province. Um, how is it to perform back home again? Well, as the old song goes, it's, hey, it's good to be back home again. It's just great. I mean, we get to see our relatives and friends fans and stuff like that so it's exciting mm -hmm. and it's always nice to come back. Now you also had your cousin Bobby Evans and your daughter uh -huh. Sherida. How is it to perform with family and share these experiences? It's just great. I mean uh, it's not often you get to go on the road uh, singing with with your kids you know uh, mm -hmm. so it's uh, I'm a plus to come back uh, to where her uh, her roots are although she was born in Ontario Canada but uh, you know, she had a lot of family back here. And of course, Bobby Evans, my cousin, uh, we uh, kind of grew up together. And I kind of, I kind of idolized Bobby when he was, uh, when I was a lot younger, and he, he was out on playing, the, you know, the different venues and things like that. So, you know, he taught me a lot. So I'm real, real pleased to have him on the tour. So um, you grew up in a musical family, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Very musical. Mm -hmm. So um, was there a song you heard or did you see someone perform when you were young and thought to yourself, I'm going to go out and get a guitar? Uh, well, I kind of, I, I, can't, I can't remember not playing guitar. All my brothers played and stuff like that. So you know, I guess it's kind of what they say in the genes, you know, but I did, there were songs that I heard that I uh, said, well, I wish I could play like that. Or uh, I learned a, f a couple songs from when I was real young and uh, one was called Mr. Lonely. I, a Bobby Vinton tune that I used to sing. So little things like that uh, just got me uh, worked up to, to get into singing. Mm -hmm. So um, how often <laughs> do you come back to Newfoundland for a visit? Well, we come back, uh, you know, every couple of years we'll come back just mm -hmm. to visit and do different things. But uh, as far as singing goes, we, we don't, we're not here all that often. Maybe, uh, maybe every four or five years we come back and uh, do a little tour. So um, for those of you who don't know, but, um, 
Eddie does live in Nashville now. So when did you make the move to Nashville? Ah, uh, let me see. That would be about 1988. Back in 1988, we we went there uh, to live. You know, I've been to Nashville many times recording and stuff, but uh, we made the big move in '88. So um, <laughs> when you got to see and touch your very first album, how did it feel? I was exciting. You know, uh, way back then it was uh, vinyl, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So we're going back in time, but. Uh, uh, it felt wonderful, you know, it's like, um, you never know where your life's going to take you, so you just keep on plugging along and kind of kind of try to make your dreams come true. And basically, you know, the first album in my hand was the, uh, the dream come true for me. And then one more question before you perform your last song. What would you say has been the highlight of your music career? The highlight of my career... Uh, would have to be my first Juno Award, I guess, back uh, back in like, I think it's 80, 81, something like that. We won a Juno Award. We were in Toronto and we got presented on stage. And back then we had Mr. Pierre Trudeau. He was our prime minister and he was sitting in the front, uh, the front row of the show. And I was like, wow, now this is not too bad for a little fella from Terra Nova. So there we were. That was exciting. Yes. Um, well, um, one more thing before you go, it's time to take a selfie. I'll go get the selfie stick. Oh, okay. Here we go. And there it is. Okay, ready? Perfect, perfect. Here we go. Okay. Well, um, thanks again for coming in today, Eddie. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. It's exciting and it's so good to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you, too. Well, um, thank you for watching our show th tonight, this evening, folks. I'd like to thank, once again, Mr. Eddie Eastman and our interview and special guest, Rick Mercer. Now, for one more song, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Eastman. <laughs> I'm eastbound for a walk. I want to ride with the morning sun Cause great big cities don't place for me Cause down east country's where I want to be I'm eastbound 401 Look out highway cause here I come I'm eastbound, eastbound 401 Well, this here song began The day that I was born from the time I put this guitar in my hand Well, the neon lights called me To this land of opportunity So I packed up all I own And I moved on Well, two years have come and gone and I don't feel the same I guess I've had enough of this city life Oh, you know where I'll be found That old east coast is where I'm bound With my old car My two guitars and my wife and kids now but Cause I'm eastbound 401 Well I want to ride with the morning sun Well this great big city no place for me Cause down east Country's where I wanna be. I'm eastbound 401. Look out highway, cause here I come. I'm eastbound, eastbound 401. Yes, I'm eastbound, eastbound 401. Yeah.